Well, hello everybody and welcome to Wednesday Bible Study. My name is Marvin Cherry and I am the senior pastor here at Hightown Church. And we're located in Northport, Alabama. As always, I'm absolutely delighted that you have chosen to study with us today. Uh, today in our study, we will continue uh, our lesson that we began on last week entitled, We the People of God. Again, that's We the People of God. Our sub theme for today is, we should be filled with faith and optimism. We the people of God should be filled with faith and we should be filled with optimism. Before we get into our study, I invite you to pray uh, as we invite the presence of the Lord uh, into our study today. Pray with us now. Father God, we thank you. And we we bless you for giving to us another opportunity to study your word. I thank you, dear God, for the, the listeners, the viewers, those who are participating in our study today. And I pray that your word would be a blessing to all of us, that your word would encourage us, that your word would uh, indeed build us up and sanctify us and make us whole. Our hearts are open, our ears are open, and we are ready to receive your word. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Again, our study for today, we the people of God. Again, we the people of God. We the people of God should be what? We should be filled. We should be filled with faith, full of faith. And also we should be filled with optimism. That is, we should be excited about God. We should be excited about the things of God. Even in times like these, uh, we should be filled with faith and excited about God. Uh, we're just, we've just set out to discover uh, we the people, we the people, we the people of God. How should we be? How should we live? How should we present ourselves uh, in today's m culture. Amen. So uh, I want you to go with me. Uh, last week we took our text, our main text from the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter in verse one. We'll do that again. And so if you'll go there with me, Philippians four and one. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. Amen. And that again is from the New Living Translation of the Bible. It ser serves as the basis of our study uh, for this week, last week, and God willing, uh, next Wednesday as well. Uh, last week in part one of our study, We the People of God, we learned that as people of God, as, as saints and as children of God, we must be uh, faithful and willing. We must be faithful and willing. Uh, if you recall, we talked about how heaven does not reward us for our intelligence. It does not reward us for our our titles, uh, but it does reward us for our faithfulness to God. Heaven rewards us for our faithfulness uh, to a holy God. We also learn this, and that is we must uh, be willing. As the people of God, we must be willing, willing people. That is, we must be people who are ready, eager, and excited, uh, and prepared to do something for the Lord. Uh, in the society that we live in today, most of what we want to do, at least most of what the world wants to do, has to do with the world. You know, I want to take care of me. I want to make sure uh, my two are fine or my three or whatever the case may be. Uh, but when we sign up to be Christians, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, when we become the people of God, then he expects us to be faithful to him. And he also asks, uh, requires of us that we be willing, again, uh, to get involved with the work of God and to get involved with the people of God. Uh, today in part two of our study, uh, we focus on how important it is for we the people of God. And I really like the way that sounds, we the people of God, because that's who we are. We are the people of God. So in part two of our study, we the people of God, we should understand this. God has called us to what? Uh, to exercise faith and not just faith, but great faith, ever increasing faith. He requires of us that we be people that are filled with faith and that we be a people that's filled with uh, contagious optimism, contagious optimism. Uh, and that's what we need. That we the people, we need to be people, uh, first of all, uh, people that are filled with faith. Uh, we, we're led by faith. We, we walk by faith. Uh, we move by faith. Uh, how do we receive? How do we receive what God has already promised us in his word? Well, the way we re receive what God has already promised us uh, uh, in his word uh, is by faith. 
amen, God requires of us that we be a people of faith. That is that we, again, exercise and walk uh, by faith. Listen, I, here's what I believe. I believe that we get the job by faith. I believe that uh, we do the impossible by faith. We conquer and we expand and we do it by faith. As believers, I believe that you and I, we get to spread the word and we do it how? We do it by faith. We receive bigger and better by faith. I believe that we come out, we come up, we come in, we come over and we come through by faith. So faith in the life of the believer is essential. It is important. Amen. For we've learned that with, without it, that is without faith, it is impossible for us uh, to please God. And so I challenge you today uh, as people of God, as children of the Most High God, uh, that we trust God enough to believe in him, that we believe that the promises that he's made to us are absolutely truth, uh, true and truth, uh, and that we can trust and that we can depend on a holy God. I want you to look at 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter and verse seven. And that verse uh, is very familiar to us. It says this, for we walk by faith, and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. And as believers, as children of God, that's how we're to walk. Amen. We may not always see the way. We may not always know the way. We not, may not always be able to uh, feel or touch the way. But you know what? Jesus Christ is the way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And so we put our trust and our faith in him. Again, we put our faith and trust in him. As believers, we walk how? By faith. We walk by faith and not by our sin. Again, not by what we see, how we feel or what we can touch or smell, but we walk by faith. Uh, we can't always go by what we hear, can we? can't always do that. Not if you're going to be a child of God. Can't always go by what we see or what we think or our emotions or our feelings. But what we do, we put our trust in God and we trust him. Uh, why? Because we are the people of God. And as the people of God, it is required of us to be filled by uh, to be filled with faith and to literally walk and live by faith. Every step that we take, every move we make, day after day after day, we walk it out and we live it by faith. Again, we don't always know what to expect. We don't always know what's going to unfold in our lives or uh, what a day may bring or a night may bring or evening may bring. But whatever it is, uh, we walk by faith and we stand on the promises of God. And the only way to stand on the promises of God uh, is by faith. Amen. True faith responds only to what God has said and whether we believe that what God has said is true or not. Now, if you want faith to become activated, if you want strong faith, if you want durable faith, amen, if you want mountain moving faith, then uh, your faith will respond to you only, though, only if uh, you know what God has said, believe what God has said and trust what God has said. Um, in, in, the, in the Bible, over in the New Testament, there was a, uh, a man who was sick, uh, sick. Uh, and he had a whole lot of no's, right? He had a whole lot of no's. He had no money. He had no transportation. He had no strength in his legs. He had no uh, 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 job, right? He had no health insurance. And he didn't have any Aflac, right? He didn't have any Aflac. But what he did have was some, some people who were very concerned about him. Some people who were concerned about him and some people who loved him. And he also had a whole lot of faith. And this man couldn't walk uh, uh, paralyzed, if you will. Amen. Uh, but he again, he had some friends that cared a whole lot about him. And he also had faith, faith in God. Amen. Uh, one day, uh, by faith, by faith, he convinced uh, four of his closest friends uh, some of his associates, if you will, to take him to a house where Jesus uh, was preaching, uh, where Jesus was preaching uh, and teaching. Uh, and, and, and so he, he was able to convince them to do this. And you know the story. They got there, uh, but they ran into some problems, just like we do in life. Right. We get excited ab about the opportunities that uh, may come our way and then something gets in the way. And that's what happened to them. Uh, this man born of four, carried by four of his closest friends to this place where the Lord was preaching and teaching. Uh, they got there and they ran into a problem. They ran into a hindrance. They ran into a barrier, if you will, that stood between uh, the man and his healing, the man and his healer. 
whose name is Jesus. I want you to know this. There will always be, uh, not sometimes or occasionally, but there will always be walls in the way. Amen. Walls in our way, obstacles standing uh, between us and our blessings and that which the Lord has promised us in his word. But I encourage you to not let that stop you. Amen. Don't allow that to stop you. Amen. That is the walls, the, the hindrances, uh, the obstacles that may uh, all of a sudden appear or show up uh, as we begin to trust God for what he has promised us. Amen. After all, uh, if we think about it, if we think about it, that's why we have faith and that's why we need faith. Faith causes us to do this. Faith causes us to leap uh, over uh, obstacles. It causes us to break through walls and it causes us to climb the tallest mountains. Amen. And when we can't climb the uh, tallest mountain, faith will help us to, uh, uh, to barrel through those mountains. Glory to God. Uh, look at verse 2, Mark, uh, of Mark, Mark, the second chapter, in verse two, and it says this. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Amen. The Lord's preaching to them. He's sharing the word uh, with uh, with those who had gathered. Uh, th th but there was a problem, a problem again for this man. And understand this. Uh, there will be problems, as, as I've already said, there will be problems, there will be uh, obstacles that are placed in the way. And those are facts, right? You know, uh, sometimes, you know, we, we, we have issues and we have troubles in our lives. And sometimes, you know, we can get so super spiritual to where we deny it. No, that's not the case. That's not true. That's not real. I don't care what anybody says. You listen to me. Facts are just facts. Amen. Facts are just facts. And, and, uh, and, and it doesn't mean that you're not saved. It doesn't mean that you're not filled with the, uh, the Holy Spirit. It's not, it doesn't mean that you don't have the Lord when you acknowledge truth. Amen. If your arm is just broken, it's just broken. That, that's, that's not speaking evil over you. That's not, the, uh, that's, that's not the enemy that's trying to attack your mind to convince you of something that, not, that, something that is not. Because if your arm is broken, it's just broken. And so what we do is we acknowledge that, you know, well, I've got a broken arm or I've got misplaced keys or, or or whatever the case may be. So, listen, don't 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 ever be afraid or ashamed um, to let the facts be facts. You see, here's the difference as believers and as people of God. And we are the people of God as people of God. What we do is this. We change the facts with our faith. Right. Uh, we don't pretend that the facts are not there or that they're not real, but we, we, we change what we change the facts with our faith. And the church said, amen. Look at Mark two and four. And when they uh, when they uh, could not come nigh unto him for the press, that is all of the people that had gathered, they uncovered the roof. Uh, that's determination, isn't it? They uncovered the roof where he was. Uh, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy uh, lay. I mean, what do you think about that? Sometimes I, I, I get disturbed when a baby cries and I'm trying to preach and teach. Can you imagine Jesus is, is there uh, in this house and he's speaking uh, and, and, and somebody's literally tearing the roof off? opening up the ceiling uh, so that they can get somebody who needed him, who needed his help and assistance down to him. Can you imagine how that must have looked? Amen. Uh, and, and, and what I like about it, you know, Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't say, all right, deacons, get these people out of here. What are they doing? But what he did was he stopped. Uh, and, and, and really what he did was not only did he watch these people, uh, the man, uh, paralyzed man and the four people, but he, he, he admired them. He admired the faith uh, that was on display. Um, and that was faith in action. You know, we talk about faith. We sing about faith, but that was faith in action. Uh, and as a people of God, we need to what? We need to not just talk it, but we need to also walk it. Uh, we need to uh, uh, get involved with the plan of God. If we say that we believe that God is going to do it, then we need to begin to act like it and move like it and move in the direction uh, uh, into the direction of which we believe that the Lord is going to do something for us. We don't just sit around and wait for something to happen, but we move in the direction, right? And that's what these uh, gentlemen had done. Look at verse 5, Mark uh, 2 and 5. When Jesus saw their faith, faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. 
son, thy sins be forgiven thee. You know what the Lord does? The Lord will always do this. He will always respond to a man's faith, to a, a woman's faith, to a person's faith. And that's what he did in this case. The Lord responded to the man's faith uh, uh, and he will respond to our faith as well. But you know what we have to do? We have to exercise our faith. We have to exercise that faith, our faith. The Bible says he forgave the man of his sins. And then he told the man what? He says, rise. He says, rise, take up your bed and go home. Rise up, take up your bed and go home. And you know what that man did? He got up, he took up his bed and he went home. When did he do this? He did it immediately. Uh, the Bible says that he rose immediately. Immediately he took up his bed. Uh, he began to carry what had been carrying him. Rise up, take up your bed. Uh, and he began to do what? He began walking home. And not only did he walk, he didn't stumble home. He walked home. He, he began to walk perfectly. Uh, there, there was no 21 day uh, rehab, days of rehab for him. There was no rigorous uh, physical therapy for him. Uh, and there was no uh, let's wait and see what's going to happen for him. The Bible declares that he got up and he began to walk immediately. And not again, again, not only did he walk immediately, but he walked well immediately. He walked well. Listen, the people of God. And that's who we are. We are the people of God. We must not be afraid to step out on faith and believe God for the impossible. Trust God for the impossible. Although the conditions may not be favorable, although it may not look possible to you. Amen. Although everybody around you is crying and singing and yelling, it's impossible. But as a people of God, we've got to we've got to go beyond that and we've got to believe God. Uh, for the, the impossible uh, and the church said amen. We must begin to not only believe it, but say it by faith. How do we live? And see, th that's, you know, th that's one of the characters, right, of, of, of the people. We the people of God. We live and we walk by faith. So we've got to begin to believe and we've got to begin to say it out of our mouths by faith. Amen. We don't have to have all of the answers. We don't have to, we don't have to know all of the complexities of the situation just by faith. You know, we don't have to have a sign all the time. We don't always have to have somebody to tell us, but just by faith, by simple faith, uh, by faith, I'm healed and happy. By faith, I'm chosen and I am forgiven. By faith, I'm beautiful and I am blessed. By faith, I'm better and I succeed. How? By faith. By faith, I am his. By faith, I'm wiser. By faith, I'm holy. By faith, I walk in righteousness. Amen. Not of my own accord, not of my own strength, but by faith. By faith, I claim it. By faith, I possess it. By faith, I'm doing it. By faith, I'm being it. By faith, I am living it. Why? Because I'm a child of God. Amen. Why? Because we're people of God. And so the Lord calls us to do what? Amen. If we're going to be his people, he calls us to live by faith, uh, to trust him, although we cannot see him and, and, and to believe that he's telling the truth about what he has promised, uh, promised to us. And I know a lot of things can come and shake our faith, uh, but God is faithful. He is faithful. He'll always be true and remain true. Uh, to his word and to his promises. Here's the second thing I want to share with you. Amen. And, and in part two of our study uh, that we're, we're calling we the people of God. And we can't always speak for everybody else, but I can say I'm a child of God. I'm part of the we, the people of God. We the people of God. We're called to be optimistic about the future. We're, we're called to be optimistic about our situation. We're called to be optimistic about what we're dealing with uh, and what we're going through. Amen. Optimistic. Say that with me. Optimistic. Uh, the Lord calls for us and I believe that he's anointed us to be optimistic. Now the word optimism uh, means to expect the best possible outcome. To, to expect the best possible outcome. And I hope and pray that that's what you're believing for. I pray that you're believing God for the best possible outcome when it comes to your children, when it comes to your job or your career, when it comes to um, what you're hoping for and what you're trusting God for, that you'll be optimistic, that, that you'll believe in, in, in your heart of hearts that God can do it, that God will do it. In fact, God has already, do, he's already done it. I've just got to get to the place uh, for it to reveal itself. Amen. God is calling for his people, we the people, uh, to, to be optimistic about uh, our lives and our situations, our children. Amen. Amen. For too long, 
many of us, most of us, many of us, we come up with reason after reason and excuse after excuse for why we cannot do it or why we cannot own it, or why we cannot have it, or why we cannot give it, or why we cannot start it, or why we cannot run it, or why we cannot be it, right? Amen. We've got to be optimistic, right? We've got to begin to be optimistic. Uh, when we're optimistic and we have a positive attitude, you know what I believe? I believe that the sky is the limit. I believe that when we're optimistic, uh, when we've got a good attitude, when we're positive, then uh, all things are possible. Anything is possible. Look, just think about some things that you've seen happen and take place. And maybe still today you're scratching your head. I can't believe that happened. Now, I won't get into some of them. Uh, but, but, but I mean, just think about it. You're like, they did that. He did that. He won that election. He... There's some things it's like, did that really happen? They got up, they survived that car wreck, that car crash. So there's some things that, 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 you know, that can happen. We just have to be optimistic. And I believe that sometimes we, our, our dreams don't come, to, come true and we never take possession or we never thrive because we just believe deep down inside that that's for other people and that it could not happen to us. And maybe sometimes that it should not happen to us. But listen to me, you can be optimistic and you should be optimistic. Uh, and the church said, amen. Uh, instead of saying we can't, let's say we can. Right. Instead of saying I can't do it. How about saying I can do it instead of saying uh, uh, instead of saying we, 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 we can't go. Let's say, yes, I can go. Right. Instead of saying we won't. Why don't we begin to say Oh, yes, we will. Why? Because we can do all things through Christ Jesus that gives us our strength. Amen. We can do all things that uh, through Christ Jesus who gives us our strength. So there's no such thing as you can't be happy. There's no such thing as you cannot overcome. There's no such thing as you cannot make it right. Because if other people have made it, if other people have overcome, if other people can be happy, so can you. What makes you so different? Uh, especially you. Oh, person of God, we the people of God. Amen. If anybody's happy, if anybody's receiving, if anybody's living an abundant life, if anybody's well, if anybody's happy, it ought to be the people of God. Wouldn't you agree with that? Amen. Uh, and so but we've got to be optimistic and we've got to have a positive attitude and a positive outlook instead of a negative one. Uh, a, a negative attitude will defeat you before you even get started. And so what does that mean for us? We've got to be positive. We've got to live life on the on, on the uh, we've got to live on the bright side of life, the happy side of life, the optimistic side of life. Uh, over in the Old Testament, God uh, promised the children of Israel a good land. You remember that he promised the children of Israel a good land, a prosperous land, uh, a land that uh, flowed with milk and honey, um, a land that would supply and meet every one of their needs. It was he, he, this is God talking to his people. Right. Uh, and so that's that should have been calls for celebration and excitement. Right. Uh, but the people, not all of the people, uh, only a handful of the people believed it. They were skeptical. Uh huh. They were skeptical and, and they doubted God's integrity. Right. They were pessimistic when they should have been optimistic. They were doubting God when they should have believed God, the, the, the God, the same God that had taken care of them. Look at Numbers 13, uh, 1 and 2, and you'll, re you'll, you'll recall what I'm talking about. The Bible says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, send thou men that may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. And so the Lord is saying, I'm, I'm, I've already given you the land, uh, and since you don't believe that I'm telling the truth, since you don't believe that it's real, since you don't believe uh, 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 that it is the way that I've said it is, then go search it out. Go spy out the land so that you can see for yourselves, because for some reason or another, and for some of us, seeing is believing. But those of us who live by faith, believing is seeing. We believe first before we see. And so the Lord gave him permission, right? He says, OK, since you don't believe me, go check it out for yourselves. Then maybe you'll be convinced. Amen. We, the people of God, should be optimistic. People who trust God. Amen. Uh, and trust that God gives provision for the 
vision. We should be a people that trust that, 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 that God sustains what he ordains. He sustains what he ordains. Amen. Moses uh, sent out 12 men to check out the land to see if it was good, to see uh, if God was telling the truth. Uh, so they went, the Bible says, and after 40 days, they came back. Well, and they were bragging. They were excited about how fruitful the land was. They were excited about how prosperous the land really was and how blessed that the land was. And so it turned out that God was telling the truth after all, right? God was telling the truth after all. Then all of a sudden, some of the men started talking negatively. Some of the ones who went to spy out, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, there is fruit there. there is, it is the land that's flowing with milk and honey. They've got it going on. It's like we've never seen it before. But uh, understand, there's some big dudes out there. There's some big old dudes out there, bigger than we are, stronger than we are, mightier than we are. Uh, they outnumber, outnumber us. They outrank us. Uh, and, and, and the report was, so we better not try this. We better not mess with these people. Well, the Lord had already declared, you know, well, this is the land that I've already given to you. All you've got to do is go get it. All you've got to do is go lay hold of it. All you've got to do is be excited and optimistic enough to go get it, no matter what you've seen. Trust God, right? Trust that God is telling the truth. Uh, one of the greatest hindrances to growth and expansion is people who have power but don't have any faith to go along with it. One of the, one of the main blockages and stoppages uh, in, 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 in when it comes to growth and expansion and, and, and being bigger and better is people who have power, who have authority, but don't have any faith to go along with it. But, but Caleb, in our text, in our study, Caleb uh, had faith. Not only did he have faith, but he was encouraged. And according to the scripture, he was optimistic, right? He was very optimistic about the outcome. He was optimistic about the possibilities. Look at Numbers 13 and 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. Now, what makes them well over to uh, well able to overcome it? What will give them the authority? What will give him the authority to say, let's go. Let's go immediately. Let's go get it. Let's get up. Let's go possess it. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? Because he was only saying what God had already said. It. Well, if God had given it to them, if it was theirs, why not go get it? There's so much that heaven has that belongs to us that many of us have not laid hold on because we're, we don't have the faith and we don't have the optimism uh, to believe that it is really ours. And so it, 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 it goes laid up. Right. Amen. So we've, we've got to be optimistic. Stop seeing the glass as being half empty, but rather half full. Right. Amen. Uh, think of all of the possibilities, uh, no matter what the lack is, no matter how dreary it may look. Trust God. Take God at his word and then get excited about it. Get excited about God's word. God wants his people. We the people. He wants us to be optimistic about the endless, unlimited possibilities that are available to us through him. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer, all because we do not believe, all because we do not trust, all because we're not excited. And one of the reasons we're not excited, because we're not sure if we really believe that God can do it or that God has given it to us. We've got to believe and stay positive even when everybody else around us is negative and dancing with doubt. We've got to remain what focused and positive, excited, eager. Uh, look at Numbers 13 and 31, uh, 13, 31 through 33. But when the men went up with him, uh, but when the men went up with him, uh, they said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Amen. Uh, and and there, there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And, and we were in our own sight as grass, uh, grasshoppers. And so we were so were we in their sight. And I always say this, that that report that they gave, you know, they were just afraid. Amen. Oh, we can't do it. Oh, we better we better wait some more. Oh, we better pray some more. Amen. And I'm certainly not uh, negating prayer. Uh, but when God has told you to do something. There's nothing left to do but to do it. 
Why are you praying about it? And oftentimes we continue to pray about it because we're afraid. We're afraid what our, our eyes can see, what our ears, we're, 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 we're afraid because of our senses. Uh, and so we stand still and we stay still. Move out, man. W move out, woman of God. Move out with the people of God. And so now these guys are bringing this negative report and they're talking about how bad it is and they're spreading these rumors uh, and all of this negative influence. And sometimes all it takes is one, one person to say, I don't know. Well, I don't think we can do it. Well, what is going to happen? You know, uh, what if it don't work? What if it does work? What if it does work? If God says it'll work, it'll work. You just have to work it. We just have to work it. And the church said, amen. Um, a lot of people, a lot of churches, a lot of businesses, a lot of careers are stuck and stagnant because of big men and women with big titles but little or no faith. Big men, big titles, but no faith to go along with it, right? So then as the people of God, I believe that we can think bigger and better. Why not think bigger and better? We can conquer and prosper if we're optimistic and if our faith is in God and not ourselves, right? God never told you to have faith in you. He told you to put your faith and trust and confidence in him. And so what happens is sometimes we think, well, I can't do that. I, I, well, I, I can't, I'm not that smart. I'm not that wise. I can't do I'm not that strong. God didn't ask you to be any of those things. He just asked you to trust him, to be optimistic about what he could do, to be encouraged about uh, uh, encouraged about what he wants to do through you. And the church said, amen. Uh, the greatest enemy, uh, I believe, uh, is not the devil. The greatest enemy to your faith is not the devil. Not the devil at all. Uh, listen to what Caleb said, and I'll tell you what the greatest enemy of your faith is in just a moment. Numbers 14 and 8. If the Lord delight in us, now Caleb is trying to get the people uh, uh, to, to understand truth, because uh, now everybody's scratching their heads, and now everybody's wondering. Now everybody's wondering, well, you know what? There's 10 of them that are saying we shouldn't, and there's two that are saying we should, right? Uh, so Caleb says in Numbers 14 and 8, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. And now he's only saying what the Lord has already said, because he remember God said it's a land that I've given to the children of it. And he'll give it to us. Verse eight says a land which floweth with milk and honey. Our cause. Listen, our cause for excitement and optimism is not in what we can do. And that's what ever that's what those 10, the 10 were looking at their own strength. They were looking at their own inabilities. They were looking at the other people instead of looking at God. And that's where we get in trouble. And that's where we waver in our faith so often and too often because we take our eyes off of God, who's more than able to do anything that we need him to do. And we put our eyes on people and circumstances and uh, and situations. But, but Caleb said, if the Lord delight in us, then he will what, bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. Again, our calls for excitement uh, and optimi optimism is not what we can do. But it is what God can do for us and what God can do through us. Look at verse uh, nine, uh, numbers 14 and nine. Uh, Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Amen. And so now I want to tell you. The greatest enemy of your faith is not Satan. The greatest enemy of your faith is not the devil. It's not uh, some demonic force. No, 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 no. The greatest enemy of your faith is your fear or your fears. That's the greatest enemy of your faith. Amen. Uh, your inability to not be afraid. To, 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 to be possessed by faith. And the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear. And so that's what Caleb is telling the people. He's just saying, just don't be afraid. God, he, he says, God, they're bread for us. You just don't be, we can do it. God will, God will do the delivering, but we've got to move out. We've got to move out. Sometimes we wait around for that special job and we don't ever put in the application. Sometimes we want the biggest and the best, but we, we're not willing to put in any work at all, right? And the church said, amen, we've got to exercise some faith and optimism 
Uh, and we've got to believe again that God is telling the truth. Uh, there's only one place for fear in our lives, only one place for fear in our lives, and that is under our feet, under our feet. Sadly, the children of Israel listened to those 10 pessimistic men. They would not listen to optimism and truth, but instead they listened to the influence of, of negativity. They listened to the influence of pes uh, pessimism uh, and sadly, uh, uh, the, the, a journey that should have only taken 40 days took 40 years, took 40 years because of negative influence that came from negative people. They wandered around in the wilderness, wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. Amen. We don't have to do that. Let's stop wandering, wandering around in life. Let's stop wandering around uh, uh, in, in Tuscaloosa, Northport, and, uh, and Tuscaloosa County, and Jefferson County, and Green County, and Perry County. Let's stop wandering around, wandering around in, in East Mississippi, West Alabama, North Central Alabama, because that's where you guys watch us all over. Uh, I, I'm telling you, let's let's stop that and let's 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 become because we are the people of God. Let's become the people of God who are filled with faith and people of God who will be filled with optimism and excitement about what God is able to do. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. I hope and pray that you're blessed by the word. Um, uh, if you would like to be a blessing to our ministry, you can give. We always invite you to give, uh, to sow seed into this ministry. If you've been blessed, if you've been encouraged, if you've been helped, uh, then think about giving, uh, sowing a gift to our ministry. Amen. Uh, next Wednesday, God willing, we will complete this study entitled We the People of God. Uh, and on this coming Sunday, I invite you to come and hang out with us. We begin a, a sermon series, a brief sermon series, two-part sermon series. Uh, I won't tell you what it is, but you've got come but I promise you if you'll come and be with us or join us online uh, eight, uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock 8 o'clock uh, you will be blessed uh, a soul stirring a message that will encourage you a message that I believe that will encourage your faith amen God bless you and we'll see you next time as we study uh, the Word of God blessings now <music>